and so I got in. The, the Les Paul. Yeah, well, that my How? Les Paul that's here. Yeah. The deluxe. That's a story, man. It's in my book, uh, but I will tell you. I mean, I, from the time I was seven years old to the time you know that my father bought that guitar for me when I was an early teenager, I had crap guitars. They were just thrifty drugstore broken guitars, which ironically now people covet. Yeah. At the mm -hmm. time, it was a crappy guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and one of my idiot friends knocked it over and broke the neck. At the, not off, but screwed up the headstock to the point where it wouldn't tune up very well. But I had to play that. My dad goes, you broke it. You're not going to get a new one. You broke mm -hmm. it. And, I, and somehow I, you know, I was, I'd always borrow guitars. And kids would have great guitars that couldn't really play very well. I go, can I borrow your guitar for this gig or for this weekend or something like that? So I scammed guitars off people, but I didn't really own one. The long story short, I, you know, instead of going to the toy store, I went to the Guitar Center in Hollywood. On a, like, at least once every couple of weeks, that's, you know, get a ride down there and just try. It was like going to the Formula One, they let you drive the cars, but you can't buy one. You can't mm -hmm. really, I couldn't afford one, obviously. And my dad had come back, he was in the film business, television film, and he'd come back off the road. What do you, let's go hang out, what do you want to do? And I said, can we go to Guitar Center, hang out? I just love to play the guitar. He said, yeah, we'll go down there. He says, maybe we'll buy an app, we'll see what's going on. So I was like, wow, I might get something, you know? And I didn't want to push it, you know? my dad worked hard. And he knew how much I loved it. You know, when, when I used to get in trouble, they would punish me, they'd take stuff away, music stuff away, stereo or whatever, you know, you can't, be, you know, it's my life. Anyway, I go in there and he goes, uh, I want to try out this uh, VT22 amp, Ampeg, like the one Keith used on Exile on Main mm -hmm. Street. So I, he, they, there was a practice room in there, so they put me in there and I, he goes, grab a guitar. So I grabbed um, the Les Paul Deluxe, and I, which is here, and I, and I put it in the room and I started, you know, I, and I cranked up the amp and I started ripping on it, like, and I was just a little kid, you know? So people are going, who's that playing? They open the door and they see like, this little deal, well, who's playing? I don't know, it's actually me, and I'm sitting there. So I was ripping it, and my dad was going like this, and I had a friend of mine with me. And I said, wow, that was really cool, Dad. Thanks for taking me down. And, well, he, my dad had walked out of the room, and I was just in there shredding him, and not shredding, but, you know, just playing whatever I knew. I was pretty good for my age, I guess. Um, and my dad came back, and he goes, all right, man, let's get out of here. Um, and I go, okay, man, let's go. He goes, uh, let's get this stuff in the car. And I went, what do you mean? He goes, the stuff, the guitar, the end, the end. I went, what do you mean? He goes, it's yours. And I'm gonna start crying now. That's fantastic. Huge moment, huge. Yeah. My yeah. father gave up getting a new car and all stuff yeah. for me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's. My mom was like, you better be nice to your father. He gave, you, you know, <laughs> gave up stuff for you. Yeah. I love my parents. I love them so much. And my dad sacrificed that for me. And that changed my life. I got yeah. this great guitar. Yeah. I mean, I think I woke up in the middle of the night to you know, polish it. You know what yeah. I mean? The smell of the case. Yeah. You know, it was just, it changed my life. Yeah. And then it really had pro gear. And then I would start, he goes, yeah, but you're going to start taking lessons, learn how to read and all this stuff, which mm -hmm. I was like, okay, whatever it takes, mm -hmm. which was also the most incredible piece of advice. And I studied with a, a wonderful man named Jimmy Weibel, who was a jazz guy who, you know, uh, play, and he took me my raw purse. He goes, he, I kind of went and auditioned for him. And he saw that I could play. He goes, wow, you're, you, know, you got all that rock stuff together pretty good. He goes, but in order to do it right, you have to learn how to read music. Yeah. And, he, and he was so patient. And I wasn't a great student because I had a really good ear. So I, the notes were, and plus I'm partially dyslexic, you know, so, which I didn't know at the time. I'm always like looking at stuff sideways. Not as bad to write everything backwards, but I have a little taste but of you it. You know what, they say that's a gift to a lot of people. Yeah, you know? it depends. You know, <laughs> like a gift. It, uh, at the time I didn't realize, it was, it was hard though. So if you could play like this, you didn't want to go down, down, down. Right. Every good boy does find F A C F A C and all the, the tricks that you learn. You know what Chet said? He, they said what? Somebody said, Chet, do you know how to read music? He goes, mm, not enough to hurt me, you know. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I mean, it was one of these kind of things. I really worked hard at it. But every time I come back, I learn it. And then he put another piece of music at the same level. And I'd be struggling. He goes, you're using your ear. Stop <laughs> using your ear. You have to read the notes. So he'd get mad at me. 
and I'm not mean mad, but like frustrated. Like, come on, man, you're paying for these lessons. Let's, let's learn something. So, you know, I immersed myself in, and then I immersed myself in every music class that there was in school, which I really can't tell you enough. We need music in schools. No kidding, I agree with you. You know what I mean? It's good for everything.